good morning. How are we doing this morning? All right, well, I tell you what, it's been an amazing week this week. If you haven't been able to jump in, uh, this last Thursday, we had our first ever Thanksgiving Friendsgiving for unmarried folks in our church, had a great turnout. Then Friday, we had Thanksgiving Friendsgiving for international students, had a great turnout. And then yesterday, we had one for uh, the homeless community. We partnered with seven different churches together, and and yeah, yeah, it was awesome time, awesome time together. Uh, matter of fact, Life Church was one of those, and uh, they left y'all a Christmas present. I took a picture of it, a Christmas tree. Those are Life Church pins. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we showed up this morning. They are all over the Christmas tree. So you're welcome to take one and leave it in any bathroom of the truck stop if you like. Okay. So, uh, so it's always fun getting to partner with other churches and, and uh, do the work of the Lord together as we go on this journey. So today, today we got a special morning. Uh, we have with us uh, someone who's going to share with us about the chosen. We're going to be digging into the book of Acts. If you got your Bibles, go ahead and pull them out. Uh, we're on page 905 of the Burgundy Bibles. If you don't have a Bible of your own, you're welcome to take one with you as you go. But uh, we're going to be in Acts chapter 2 as our launching point. Now, we've been reading fr- through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and we're in the book of Acts, which is one of my favorite books. It's where the Holy Spirit comes and fills the church, and, and believers are acting in faith, walking with God. Uh, so if you haven't started reading the Bible with us, just start this week in Acts and start reading along with us as we read about the early church and what God does in and through the early church. Now in Acts chapter 2, set up a little background for you. Uh, Christ has died. He's risen from the grave. He has walked with his disciples for 40 days. He has empowered them, taught them, encouraged them. And now he has left them, but he told them, I'm not going to be leaving you alone. Matter of fact, he says, it's better for you if I leave now because I am going to be sending you the Holy Spirit. Now, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God's presence on earth, okay? He puts the Holy Spirit within the believers. He tells them to go and congregate together and be praying together, and then I will come to you in the form of the Holy Spirit. And for each one of us that are followers of Christ, if you've given your life to Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit has come to dwell with inside of you and gives you wisdom and direction and and gifts and abilities to serve the local church and to serve the kingdom of God. So, so many of you were using those just yesterday. We had over 100 volunteers here. Uh, So many were using those as we poured into international students on Friday nights. And so many of you use them every Sunday morning as you serve in the children's ministry and the youth ministry and the teaching ministry. So thank you, thank you, thank you for letting the Holy Spirit use you in a mighty way. Today we'll get to hear from somebody that also has uh, had the Lord use him as well in different things. You got your Bibles, Acts chapter 2, we're going to read verses 1 through 4. It says this, it says, On the day of Pentecost, All the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone was present, was filled with the Holy Spirit, and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to speak to us. Lord... We thank you that you are not limited by what we can do as people. But God, when you get involved, you send the power of your Holy Spirit, God, you can do above and beyond all we can think or imagine. And so we are grateful for how awesome you are. We are grateful for the way that you intervene and you give us wisdom and insights and and powerful ideas that shake the world, Lord. And we pray that today... Each person in here, God, each person will realize that you have put inside of them upon time of salvation the gift of the Holy Spirit, and that the Holy Spirit can do above and beyond what we can ever do in our own strength or knowledge or wisdom. And so I pray that we will discover that this morning in Jesus' name. 
Amen. All right. Well, if you, uh, if you read that passage, you may wonder, what is this uh, filling the house with a roaring or mighty windstorm? And the, the deep answer to that is, I don't know. I've never had a, a windstorm come in when I was praying and have that experience. Matter of fact, we don't read of it ever taking place again in the New Testament, okay? This was a, a one-time experience where the Holy Spirit came and was delivered to the church and done in such a way that it would shake the foundations of even the disciples' faith, that they would realize they have the supernatural power. If anybody went to the chosen, anybody go to the chosen this weekend? Let me good number of you. I loved it when they're sitting around talking about it as, as he's sending them out to the world to preach the gospel, and they're sitting there going like, uh... You want us to heal people, and you want us to go without any protection or any money? Or... And then the one guy, I loved it, I don't remember which disciple it was, says, did I miss some kind of uh, commissioning or service or something? Because I don't feel any more powerful now than I did when I came in the room, right? And I, I think that can be said of each one of us, that... This gift that he gives us, this power, this word he speaks over us, sometimes we're waiting for this roaring sound, this, this powerful move, when it's just a simple whisper. It's a simple nudge. It's, it's the Lord sending his ideas into our mind that, that burdens in our heart that we might make a difference where we live, where we go to school, where we play. And so... Uh, Acts chapter 2, they got, they got these, it says what looked like flames of tongues. Now, I got to tell you, I'd have liked to have been there. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I think I'd have liked to have been there so that I would have been empowered all the more. Like, you just got to know what God can do. But don't take for granted the fact that Jesus says, we are more blessed than the disciples because we believe and yet we've not even seen those days. We follow and we trust, and we didn't walk with Jesus for three years. And we get to believe as well without having those kind of amazing, dramatic opportunities that they got to have. But it says, everyone then was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues or languages as the Holy Spirit gave them that ability. They began to speak in such a way that uh, Pentecost was a holiday, right? Like we have Thanksgiving and Christmas. And, and so people would come into Jerusalem for family vacation. And they would come in together to, for spiritual celebrations. And they would come from all over the world. And, and many of them did not speak the native tongue. But they would come. And it, because it was a celebration, they'd have all these nationalities with different languages. And so when the Holy Spirit came and they began to speak, they spoke in all these languages so that all could hear and all could understand, and it was an amazing moment in the life of the church. Well, for you and I, what does that mean? Well, that same power that was given of the Holy Spirit filling the disciples is available for you and I. When we come to faith in Jesus Christ, He puts the Holy Spirit inside of us, and, and we begin to walk it out, and we have His power and His presence inside of us that we might know the will of God, that we might walk it out each day and, and love people through His power even more than our power, and we might walk in that. Let's skip down to verse 16 to 21. So Peter explains to the people what are happening, and then he, he goes to them in verse 16 to 21, He's going to preach a sermon uh, from the prophet Joel. And what he's saying is, Joel prophesied that this was going to take place in the life of the church. He said, now today, you're seeing it fulfilled. And so starting in verse 16, it says, no, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the 
The moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So what's he saying? There's more to come. There's more supernatural events to come. God is not done at the time of Pentecost back then, and he's not done today in our lives today. God wants to continue to move in everybody's life who's a follower of Christ. And I love what it says here that, that your, your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Both men and women, he'll pour out his spirit and they will prophesy. They will proclaim the truth of Christ. And I want to I wanna tell you today, I believe God wants to use everybody in this room. I believe he's equipped each one of us uniquely and specially so that you can do something great for God. That great may be your heart of kindness that leads you to take a bag of groceries across the street when your neighbor is struggling. That, that supernatural power that you might have might be to pour into marriages that are hurting and help them find victory. That superpower you might have might be able to be there for the grieving widow or the grieving widower, because you've walked through that, and you could pour into them what God has poured into you. Sometimes we're look, waiting for the big flash or this supernatural thing, like we saw in the book of Acts, and sometimes the biggest thing that God might be calling you to do is drive the bus and pick up 30 young people and bring them to church that they might hear the good news of Jesus, or show up early and, and run the computer system and the sound system and and, and be the behind-the-scenes person because that's the way he's wired you, and you're great at it. Each one of us is called to something different, but he empowers each one of us. I want you to meet somebody now. He's, he's a friend of mine named Adam, and Adam has been working with The Chosen, and uh, he's, he's from Sparta, Tennessee, and he's going to share with us how God's used him. Good to have you, bro. So uh, this is my friend Adam, and uh, we got to know each other several years, and he actually invited my wife and my kids. We went to, uh, was it the first movie, Heaven Bound, that you actually directed? That, was that yeah, your first? Yeah, oh, well, I produced it, yes. Yes, so we, uh, um, yeah. yeah. Produced it here in town, here in Cookville and Sparta. Yeah. And, and you might still be able to get a copy. I mean, the Taboo, yeah. the taboo kids are in the movie. Yes, yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Yeah. You see the little rear ends run up to a table and... And buy something. It was amazing. They're they're so excited about that. It was that. at least seven seconds. At least, yeah. at least seven, seven, seconds. seven seconds of fame. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, you've moved on to uh, to other things since then. Uh, but let's start with your story. Mm -hmm. Tell us how you came to follow Christ and what that looks like for you. Oh uh, yeah. So I was born and raised in small town Sparta, just down the road from you. And uh, I went to Sparta First Church of the Nazarene with uh, my parents, and I was saved when I was real young, and mm -hmm. been in church my whole life. Um, and then I uh, actually went to a, a Nazarene college, too. Went to Trevecca Nazarene University in Nashville. Um, so, so I've been a, been a Christian mo uh, since I was young. So you stayed the course. I, I did. I stayed the course. I didn't get too crazy. I that's didn't get awesome. Too, too far That's off. awesome. I mean, that's... <laughs> that was my brother. I would say my brother was the <laughs> He was sheep. the troublemaker. He was of the course he yeah. was. Of course he yeah. was. Yeah, and we bring him up here. He'd say, oh, no, it was Adam, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I was, I was born and raised in the church, and... Um, and, and yes, and it, it didn't stray too far, but obviously there was lots of times where I was very stagnant in my faith and mm -hmm. was not um, pursuing the Lord or pursuing uh, what he's called me to do like I should be. And uh, that's just grown with age and with um, a family and a wife and all those things. It just helped, you know, grow my faith and kind of, it was more kind of like this, where I know some people are like this, mm -hmm. I was kind of more. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. So in that journey of, of faith, you came to the Lord so how did the Spirit of God begin to put a de desire in your heart to, to do movies or film or anything? I mean, is that what you always wanted to do as a kid? or? No, definitely not. So I never, I, uh, actually when I was a kid, I wasn't even allowed to go to the movies. Okay. Uh, so I didn't go to my first movie until I think I was 12. 12, was pretty, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so my passion was basketball. I had a huge passion for basketball and I loved basketball and that was my life and I was obsessed with it. And uh, so I did that, got a scholarship to play in college, went to college, went to Trevecca to play. And... Um, and about my junior year of college, I was, well, I, my wife said to me, you're too short and white to go to the NBA, so what do you want to do? <laughs> and uh, I was like, well, Your wife is a prophet. Yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
but I just started looking for other things, and, and um, my relationship with the Lord was growing, and I was, uh, what am I going to do with my life? I've, all I've ever known is basketball. Mm. And about that time, I started getting in, into some acting. I had stumbled on a, uh, an agent and got an agent, and I started getting in, some, in Nashville and some music videos and commercials and things like that and started getting on these film sets and just absolutely fell in love with it. I'd never had a passion for anything else besides basketball like this, and it was mm. an instant passion for it. And then there was just this couple weeks at college that – I was just spending time in prayer with the Lord, and it was just so clear that, like, this is, this is what I'm supposed to do, not only to act in front of the camera, but to go make my own content and, to, and, and, and just totally revealed to me, too, that it was my mission field. It wasn't, mm. it was like, uh, I didn't have to go overseas, I didn't have to go that. It was like, let's go straight to Hollywood. Let's go straight to what's impacting culture. And mm. it was very clear that this is what I'm called to do, secular and non-secular, Christian and not, uh, to just be involved and to witness to this community. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like to call some of those things God's sentences. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're you're walking forward with the Lord and you're trying to do what he wants, and then all of a sudden these these doors just open up that you didn't expect to even see, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh oftentimes I think it's a result of the prayer that you're having. You know, just like you said, you you realize basketball wasn't going to carry you for the rest of your life and you begin praying, Lord, what's next? And as we open our hearts up to that, what's next, God? That's when God can use us. That's when he can begin speaking to us. But we've got to humble ourselves and realize, okay, maybe I'm not going to make the NBA. You know, I, for me, I always knew I could have made the NBA. Right. But, you know, I, I decided that I wanted to pursue the things, uh, ministry instead. You know? Right. Same, yeah. obviously. Same thing. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My agent told me the same thing. So, uh, <laughs> so as... Uh, you begin to pursue this thing in, in film, and how did God begin to lead you to this idea of working with the Chosen set and everything? Uh, yeah, so I was very blessed to, um, I'd done a lot of faith-based projects before that, worked with the Kendrick Brothers, you probably recognize their films of like Courageous Facing the Giants and uh, a lot of those big Christian hits, so I worked with those guys and done a lot of faith-based stuff and non-faith-based, and so that was kind of the connection in the community, in the film community, and through those connections I had met Dallas, um, mm-hmm. actually through Heaven Bound, which is, mm-hmm. which is another God story, through making Heaven Bound, it actually, the way I met Dallas was that it showed at a uh, film festival, and mm-hmm. he was showing Resurrection of Gavin Stone. Um, they were showing back to back, and they're both comedies. So he saw Heaven Bound, and my friend Tori Martin introduced me to him, and uh, that's how we connected the first time, was show, showing that film. And, uh, and then he sh- showed Resurrection, we talked about our films, and that's how we met. And then, uh, of course... Um, he had his film that tanked and did totally bad, and, but that's, uh, again, we can talk about that, how The Chosen was birthed from that. No, well, don't you share that, because I think that's a cool God story, because, yeah. uh, you, and you can see it online. I mean, Dallas talks about that. Dallas is the, uh, what do you call him, the founder of The Chosen? The creator series? of The Chosen. The creator. Yeah. The Writer, the creator. director. Yeah. Okay. And, and yet he talks about how it was in the midst of failure and discouragement that his heart was open. So share with us just how you saw that play out and how you see the difference now, because you knew him before right. and after. So I knew him before when he made Resurrection. He had just made the film, and it was a pretty big film, as there were some big-time producers involved from some, big, from some other big movies. So it was some of the biggest connections he'd seen, and he'd been directing for 10 years, and this was his big move. And Resurrection went to theaters, and it tanked. I mean, it's, it's a good movie, but you just don't know the success of things. So the movie tanked and basically ruined his career. He, all those producers that he thought he was going to get involved with and make all these movies with, it was over because this was not successful and that it was it needed to be. And so he never, for him, he didn't know he was going to make another movie again. And um, as, as I said before, he, he was kind of arrogant when I met him originally. Mm-hmm. And when that tanked, I mean, he was totally humbled and uh, he was, and he gave it all to God. He was like, okay, this is it. I'm done. I'm okay. If I never direct another film, I'll just do what you have me do, Lord. And The Chosen was birthed from that. Yeah. And obviously the success of The Chosen just comes directly from his testimony, mm-hmm. which is just an amazing success story yeah. uh, to see that. Yeah. And, and I would say to you, humility is something that Christ talks about a lot because it is essential for global impact. If, if, it, if there's a hint of it's all about me in the process, well, guess what? People are going to pick up on that. And if you want to brag about how you're successful in the ministry and how, man, I did this and I did that and Christ can't get the glory if you're fighting for it, right? So he wants it to be where we recognize. And, you know, that may have been a a failure as far as 
Dallas was concerned of at the box office, but it was a success for God because he got Dallas in the place that he could be ready to receive, right? Exactly, and, and now the success of the Chosen doesn't matter to him as far as the numbers and the things that would have mattered to him before. So, right. You know, he wasn't ready for something like the Chosen then, mm -hmm. and God humbled him, and now he's ready for something like that to be that successful and to, to become famous through it so mm -hmm. that he can handle that, yeah. Well, obviously God wants us to be passionate about what we're doing and wants us to be effective and to give it all we have, but we've got to be willing to say, Lord, to you be the glory. To you be the glory, God. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you met him. You became assistant director. You start serving. Uh, where have you seen God at work? What is, the, what is God doing and his storyline through this whole chosen? Uh, yeah, I mean, just the, the success of the show, I think, speaks for itself as far as impacting the world. Well, folks sure. that don't know, what, yeah. what, what, what yeah. is God doing? Yeah, so it's, um, for The Chosen, it is the number one crowdfunded project of all time, like, by far. So By far. So, it, I mean, like, more than anything else ever done in Hollywood. Right, right. anything secular, it doesn't matter, yeah. The, the number one before, several years ago, was Mystery Science Theater 3000. They raised... Uh, yeah, I, I used to watch those. Um, <laughs> You're going to admit that on stage? I know. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I asked for forgiveness. No, I'm um, just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's funny. They raised $7 million uh, for a movie they were doing. Uh, the Chosen Season 1 raised $10 million, over $10 million for the first season. We're on Season 3 now, so we've raised several more million than that because it's still crowdfunded. Yeah. So the success is just insane by the money that's raised. And then the way that it's impacting culture and impacting the world, it's, just, it's, it's not just impacting the United States, but it's all over. We talked about earlier, it's, it's in China, it's in Iran, it's, it's in places, it's, it's all over. And because it's free on the app, and they can just have the internet, and they can just download it for free and watch it, they don't have to pay for it, it's, it's just had access to so many other people that have never seen a story about Jesus. Yeah, and just to put that in perspective, I'd say it was about 35 years ago, Campus Crusade came out with the, the Jesus film. Mm -hmm. It may have been longer or shorter, I can't remember, but we... We used it in multiple places, taking the, the good news, and it was, it was a good movie, but, but you, when you try to squeeze the whole story of Jesus into an hour and a half, I mean, you just have to leave a boatload out, you know what I'm saying? And so, uh, what I love about The Chosen, because it's in series, I mean, you guys are going into detail, we're getting to, I, I mean, for me, I'm really feeling like I'm, I'm knowing these characters, and as I'm thinking about the 12 disciples, I'm thinking of of folks in the church, I'm like, oh yeah, that guy's that, you know, it's like, uh, you, Judas, yeah, yeah, and I'm, yeah. you're Judas? No, no, what? no, I'm what? saying that, <laughs> you look out there, I, and I don't say, no, he's the one I didn't pick out, he's the one I didn't pick out, <laughs> uh, but, but you see their characters, and you get, kind of begin that, that feel of, man, these guys were real people, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the, in the show last night, uh, when we went Friday night, I love the scene where they're all, all the disciples are together, and he's telling them, hey, I'm going to send you out to heal people and cast out demons. And, and you get to see the looks on their face, which is probably accurate to what the, their yeah. faces would have been like, snap, me? Mm -hmm. Casting out demons? I don't, wait a minute, wait a minute, Lord, that's not me. That's, uh, you know, that'd probably be the zealot guy, right? Yeah, yeah. And they're all trying to put it off on him. Yeah. I, yeah, I think it's so easy when you read your Bible to just think that they were so great and so perfect, the disciples, that they weren't these, like, not so great people. They were yeah. just like us. And so I think The Chosen captures that so well, putting them all in a room and going, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Oh, you, you, where was the ceremony? I missed this, the mm -hmm. ceremony. What, what, nothing's changed. I'm still nobody. And you're saying I can heal people and cast out demons? Like, yeah. It's so cool to obviously see the show. It makes it relate to us. It know? does. Yeah. It does. And, and the global impact, as you said, we, we pulled it up earlier. It's like where's uh, Chosen been shown in the last 24 hours? It was uh, Iran. It was China. It was Russia. It was... Uh, all these nations that we can't send missionaries into, that we can't proclaim the gospel personally, uh, and yet it's there, and it's getting shared, and God is, God is speaking about the truth of Christ and the hope of Christ through that ministry. Mm -hmm. And so the, the global impact for me is, is what's so exciting. Yeah, yeah, very much. So seeing what God's doing. Well, tell us uh, just some, some supernatural stories of what God has done uh, whether it's on the set or, uh, you know, you shared one earlier, first service that I thought was crazy amazing. It, just share something that you've seen God do that, just to brag on God being at work in this. 
So should we not share it with second service so they have to go back and like watch it? Do you have it on video? No, we don't have. We don't. First service, we don't take. Yeah. Oh, so I got to uh, tell that one. That, that's our dry run. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, so, so se season one, if uh, I, I'm curious, how many people in here have seen at least like the first season? Oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So season one was the the miracle of the fish. So if you haven't seen it, sorry, I just ruined it for you. You're going to see the miracle. Well, no, of the they fish. read the book. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. They read. Should the, be good, right? They read the book. Yeah, it's okay. Well, uh, what's really cool is we do a lot of behind the scenes. Because we were crowdfunded, we were founded from, um, you know, the internet of people following. So we have so many behind the scenes videos. We're probably the number one thing out there that has, so, we film every single day. And we release videos every day of what we're doing every day, which is boring for the most part. But uh, we have so many stories because of the show and what we're doing that there's, there's stuff all the time. So you can check these out online. But one of the coolest ones from season one, it's called The Miracle of the Miracle of the Fish. Um, because... The miracle of the fish we were filming for season one was a true miracle. I mean, we could not pull it off. We got there the day of, and we didn't have any fish. How so, many fish were you supposed to have? Uh, we had like, it was like five barrels. It was something like 3,500 fish or something yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, um, You know, this is almost four years ago now, so I'm struggling to remember it. But, um, uh, but we showed up on the day that we're filming, and it's the day we have to film the fish because we're leaving that location and going somewhere else, and uh, we didn't have any fish. So, um, so we had to basically what we called a green burrito. We filled up a big green balloon with water that they had to then lift and then put into the boat to make it look like they were the fish. And then the fish were uh, in post. They did visual effects uh, to put the fish in, which you were you had no idea. I had no idea. No, when you said that first service, I was like, there were no fish. <laughs> I mean, like if you watched it, I never would have known there were no fish. I thought they were. Fish, but then when you talked about trying to get 3,500 fish, I was like, that'd be a lot of fish just to get there in the first place. Mm -hmm. But hey, at least you saved the money on the fish, or you had a fish. Right, yeah, we did. We fish, actually, yeah, again, get... it was America. We saved money, <laughs> we made our day, and we actually, and the scene turned out beautiful. Turned out, turned out it, great. You know, I think it turned out really well and was very believable, and most people did not know it was visual effects, which is why we didn't want to do that. Yeah. We didn't want it to be visual effects. We wanted it to be real so people felt real and didn't get taken out of it. Yeah. But uh, it turned out great. And yeah. so, and there's just countless stories like that. I mean, um, uh, uh, even if you watched season two, and then if you did watch the series this weekend, yeah, season two to season three, we shot Sermon on the Mount. We a lot of those scenes of him preaching, we shot last year okay. on season two, and it was twenty-eight degrees and cold and rainy and nasty. Twenty-eight degrees. Yes, and all the was it in Cookville yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> and there's and everybody's out there freezing, and all the trees were brown, and it was terrible. Then we filmed more of it this season when we started season three mm -hmm. and that was the middle of the summer green grass green trees and bright sunshiny days well we needed one day uh a d actually a day and a half to film the rest of the s him preaching the sermon on the mount mm -hmm. that one day was full clouds all day and it had been sunny every single day all <laughs> sunshine and that day all of a sudden it dropped down to like 60 degrees and it was cloudy all day when we filmed sermon on the mount to match a year ago, what we shot, and then shot this year. That's awesome. Just stuff like that, just constantly happening yeah. on set. And, yeah. Uh, well, one thing you talked about was one day when you had fog, mm -hmm. and you couldn't shoot. I mean, you had to shoot a 12-hour day, and you got all the way to 3 o'clock, and, and then finally, I mean, I don't know if you prayed before then, but like at 3 o'clock, I mean, y'all gathered together, right? Yeah, I prayed, and then uh, the fog just instantly cleared within minutes that had been there for seven or eight hours, yeah. and a 12-hour day we needed to shoot, we shot it in about four hours, yeah. which would normally take us 12. So it was miraculous that we could even accomplish it that quickly. And then, of course, the fog just moving out instantly was incredible to see. Which is a pretty interesting testimony to the power of God and, and also the stupidity of man. Because why do we always wait eight hours before we pray, mm -hmm. right? It's like, why don't we start when the problem happens? But I, so many times, I'm like, I'll try to fix it on my own for so long. And, and I'll be like, okay, I, I'll, I'll do this and I'll do that. And, and then when everything fails, and I'm like, oh, maybe I should pray. And yeah. the Lord's like going, you know, I could have saved you eight hours there, buddy. <laughs> you know? Uh, so yeah. it's great to see when God hears those prayers and answers those prayers. Well, moving forward, just how is it on your family? I mean, you're gone how long were you gone this last time? What, seven months or something for the shooting? Oh, boy, yeah. So uh, each season's gotten bigger. So I think season two, we shot like 62, 64 days. This season, we shot 80 days because the scripts were longer, bigger. Mm -hmm. There's more to cover. And so uh, I started, and I do a lot of prep for the show. So I started in April, 
and I got back in mid-September. Okay. Um, and then we shoot in Texas mostly. We shoot in Texas and Utah. So mm-hmm. um, I have I live here in Cookville, and I have five kids and a wife, mm-hmm. and uh, so that is it proves to be extremely challenging. Yes. Yeah. And um, yeah. <laughs> so you so you have five kids, mm-hmm. and you're trying to parent from a distance, mm-hmm. and love your family well. I mean, that's got to be some some. Uh, some prayer-focused days you have to have, I imagine. Yes, for sure. It, yeah, it uh, requires to be intentional um, about my prayer life and, and, and spending time like that, as well as being intentional with my family um, when I'm home. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, what would you say to folks today? You know, I mean, whether they go see the, the show or not, what would you say to them just about when the Spirit of God put something on you? Because you, you kind of had a shift. It was basketball for so long. But then something new began to brew. I, I think in this room today, we got a lot of folks that, man, they may have pursued something for a long time. And maybe that was kind of winding down. And what would you say to folks, you know, about pursuing God? How did you hear that whisper? How did the Holy Spirit nudge you this direction? Yeah, I think I, think I had to be, I said this something similar to this before, but I think I had to be quiet. I think you have to be quiet, be still, and listen. And that's so hard to do in today's culture. Obviously, it's hard for me to do with five kids running around, but um, I, you know, I, I just I remember that time as many years ago now of just getting quiet and focusing and, and saying, "Lord, what do you want from me? Where do you want me to be? What do you want me to do with my life? Like, what what is my testimony? Mm-hmm. Like, like Dallas's testimony? What's my testimony? What do you want me to do?" And that's not something that stopped back in college. I'm still mm-hmm. doing that today. So yeah. When the, when the chosen finished this season, we just finished in September. I have no idea what's next. I don't have the next job necessarily. Um, because I'm, I'm freelance. I just go job to job. And so um, it, it's a constant, the great thing is it's a constant reminder for me from the Lord of going, okay, all right, God, what, what do you want, where do you want me next? Mm-hmm. Do you want me spending the next several months at home with my family? Do I need to take the next job? Where, you know, so it's, um, for me, it's kind of easy to stay in a constant state of prayer because I need to because I don't know where I'm going next. Right, right. But that's, that's <laughs> so, good because for each one of us, you know, it can get easy to get in a rut, Right. Uh, where you just you're just going through the motions of being a follower of Christ. You you're not having to answer those questions like where's my next job coming from every three months or every six months and how you're going to feed five kids and and do all that type of thing. But whatever God puts inside of you, I want to challenge you to continue to seek His face, continue to ask Him, Lord, what what is next, and not to settle, not to settle for. Well, this is what I can do on my own strength, my own power, but to continue to seek and ask, Lord, what is it you want? What is it God wants for me? Amen. Amen. So what would you say to everybody as they, uh, as, as you leave today? Is there a word of encouragement, a, a word of truth that maybe the Lord will put on your heart to share with us today? Oh, yeah, I just think that, especially for, for young people that are, that are in college or trying to figure out what's next in life, to just to just find that, to just find that time to be quiet and obedient and listen. And I know that's hard, but just, um, I, there's so much guidance there and, and he'll give you, it's, you know, it says he'll give you the desires of your heart. And so um, I started desiring film, you know, and, and like had this all of a sudden new passion for it. Mm-hmm. And I think the Lord integrated that into me, but then he also just showed me of, of how I could do it. And, and, and then not only did he give me the connections and the network and the, and Help me succeed, of course, because mm-hmm. so, I have so many stories of how just one thing led to another to where I am today. And so I think that, um, that that's just that constant, being in that constant state of prayer and obedience of just listening. And of course, I'm guilty of not doing that, of, mm-hmm. just like the rest of us. Sure. And uh, I'm, I'm still there today. And so, mm-hmm. um, but, uh, but if you're looking for what's next, uh, don't just uh, involve God in, in your plans. Make him all of it. Amen. You know, just... Walk through it with him, and it, it'll be so much better. I promise. <laughs> That's good word. All right, let's give it up for Adam. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Thanks. Adam, if you'd uh, go stand by the Christmas tree when you leave, and people can come ask you questions, is that cool? Yep. All right, all right. So, in light of the Scripture passage, as we're looking at the Holy Spirit coming into the early church, I just want you to believe, I I believe with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, the power of the Lord is still here. The Holy Spirit has not changed, hasn't diminished, hasn't shrunk. 
The Holy Spirit still wants to speak in each one of our lives, still wants to move in each one of our lives, still wants to allow each of us to be a part of hearing from God and obeying. And it may be something like as I look out and see my brother that teaches in our fifth, sixth, and seventh grade class upstairs in the years he's put serving in there. It may be something as far as serving behind the scenes in the, the deacon ministry that visits people in the hospital and prays with those who are hurting. It may be something that nobody will ever put you on stage for. And you may be saying, great, I never want to be in front of people. And you'll be the behind the scenes person, the backbone to lead the next great ministry from behind the scenes. But I believe that God wants everybody in this room to be engaged in his mission, to be with him in that mission, wherever we live, we work, we play, our professions are our mission fields, our families are our mission fields, our friendships are places that we can show the love of Christ. And I, I just want to challenge you today to ask that question. What is it that God has nudged you in? What is it that he's whispered, hey, have you thought of this as a change? And you've kind of put off on the back burner because you thought, Lord, that, that'll never work. I'll never be able to be in film. I'll never be able to be in anything big, Lord. I, that, that, I'm from Sparta, Tennessee. I'm from Cookville, Tennessee. I'm from... Manchester, I'm from McMinnville. Lord, a guy from here is not going to be dot, dot, dot. I just want to challenge you to reject that lie. And if the Spirit of God is whispering it into you, to come today and say, Lord, I'm giving it to you. So I'm going to invite you to stand with me. Eli is going to come out and, and lead us in a, a song of commitment. And, and over here today, if, if the Lord is leading you to, to say yes to something that you've been putting off, or if he's put something on your heart that you want to pray through by yourself, come over here to my left to the prayer kneelers and just talk to the Lord about it. Just You say, why, why can't I just do it from where I'm standing? You can. But there is something supernatural that happens. I'm just telling you. When you're willing to come up and say, Lord, I'm, I'm committing this to you. And so if the Lord's putting that on your heart or to pray for someone else, maybe who is wrestling with that or that someone else that you love that doesn't yet know the Lord, then come forward and pray up here. And we won't, we won't pray with you, okay? That's your private spot. Over here, though, if there's something that you'd like to commit to the Lord or some of them that you feel like the Lord's put on your heart that you want someone to pray with you about, then you could come up here, and, and as you come up here, one of our staff members, one of our deacons, or uh, someone will pray with you. Just as you kneel, they'll just kneel beside you and say, how can I be praying for you? And you can share with them. Now, maybe there's something that you really need to unpack. It's going to take you a while. We have a prayer room in the back to my left uh, that will have someone back there to pray with you. If God's speaking to you, then, then go and, and let them pray with you. And then I'll be down front. And if you've never trusted Christ with your heart, you've never said, Lord, I'm, I'm all in and, and had the Holy Spirit come and dwell within, then I, I invite you to come forward. Let me talk with you through that or have someone else talk with you through that and help you make that decision. As Eli plays, you can sing, you can pray, you can come forward. Let's all listen to what the Lord's saying. Hey, thank you so much for joining us online this morning. We would love to further connect with you. So if you could go to online.theriverscc.com, there's several buttons there you can push. One of them says connect. So click on that. That lets us know that you're here. and We'd love to let you know how thankful we are that you joined us. There's other things you can click on there. Uh, there's a place that you can let us know your prayer requests. We'd love to be praying with you. There's a place to, to give. There's a place to check out some of our podcasts. You can also go to our YouTube channel. And if you just search there, the River Community Church, you can see some of our past messages and past videos. Once again, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We are glad you're here.